Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter, and today I have a crochet blanket pattern to share with you guys. Here is what it looks like. I'll step in a little closer so you can see. This one was really fun to make, and basically throughout the entire pattern, you're just repeating the same four rows over and over, and then you will be adding on a border at the end as well. Um, so I will walk you through that in this video tutorial. I'll be making a small little swatch um, to show you how to work up the rows and then I will show you how to add the border on at the end um, You will be needing two different yarns for this um, Blanket to give it the striping effect and the color changes. I used worsted weight pound of love from lion brand and then a super fine weight yarn from Lion Brand as well called Mandala String. And all the exact yardage is available free on my blog. All of the information that you need um, to make this blanket is on my blog as well. I will link to that in the description and the pattern is free on there. Um, if you prefer the written pattern or if you just wanna follow along while watching the video tutorial, I recommend doing that as well. And then this is available as a kit with Lion Brand. So the kit comes with all the yarn you need to make your blanket, plus it comes with a free copy of the printable PDF pattern and then you can um, customize your yarn colors and swap it out so if you want more of a neutral look you can swap out the mandala string um, yarn for a different color there's lots of really cute color options you can keep one you can keep the pound of love the same and swap out the mandala or switch it up and keep the mandala the same and swap out the pound of love you can do whatever you want to customize it and um, to your liking so I will link to that in the description as well and then they have some really good sales and I will let you guys know about that if you are subscribed to my newsletter I always like to send out an email letting you guys know when really good sales are happening on my kits and I also like to let you know when I have free patterns new tutorials, anything like that, anything that has to do with Evelyn and Peter and crochet patterns, I always send out a newsletter to my subscribers. I promise I do not spam anything or give your emails away. This is just to let you guys know first what is happening with Evelyn and Peter when there's new designs out and available. So you can subscribe to that from my blog, which I will link to. Um, and that I think that's pretty much all you need to know for this blanket. It's not nothing too crazy. You're just holding your yarn double and repeating the same rows over and over. And then you can easily customize the width and the length as well. So if you want your blanket wider or shorter, you can just add in your stitches in multiples of two at the first row. And then you can just continue working your blanket as long as you want it um, or as short as you want it. And you can just stop um, after repeating a certain amount of times to customize that and then just adding the border on is super easy as well. So I'll show you how to do all of that in this video tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. So for this blanket, you're going to need two different types of yarn. We are using Mandala String Yarn, which is a weight of one, and I'm using it in the color Jazz. And then you're also going to need a worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand's Pound of Love in the color Antique White. And we're going to be holding these yarns double throughout the pattern. And then you're also going to need a pair of scissors and a needle to weave in your ends, as well as a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. Be sure to head over to my blog to get the exact yardage amount and requirements needed for this pattern. So for the main body of this blanket, we are going to be holding both of these yarns together. So you're basically just gonna pretend that it is one yarn from here on out until we get to the border. So just hold both ends together and tie a slip knot and then go ahead and insert your hook and pull tight to secure. So you're gonna hold it just like any other yarn, um, holding these two strands together at the same time as we work. So we're going to be starting off with a series of foundation double crochet stitches. If you do not know how to do a foundation double crochet, you can always work up a starting chain instead. So you would need to work up a total of 126 chains and then work your first double crochet into the third chain from the hook and in each chain across. But I always like to recommend learning how to do the foundation double crochet instead. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. So for that, you're going to chain three. So you're just yarning over and pulling through three times and then we're going to be working our first stitch into that very first chain that we made so yarn over and in that back bump go ahead and insert your hook and then you want to make sure that those two yarns don't split apart so make sure you're going underneath both and then yarn over pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the first loop only three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops 
and then yarn over, pull through the final two loops, and that is one foundation double crochet stitch. So now we're gonna yarn over again, and in the bottom of that stitch that we just made, put it under both of those loops there. So you're putting it under a total of four, but again, we're pretending that these two yarns are just joined together as one. So technically under both of those two loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the final two. And that is our second foundation double crochet. Again, we're going to yarn over and then on the bottom of that stitch that we just made, we'll be inserting our hook under both of those loops. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. And we're just gonna continue repeating this until we have a total of 124 foundation double crochet stitches. So you just yarn over, insert into the bottom of that previous stitch, work your foundation double crochet, and then repeat until you have a total of 124. Again, if you are doing a starting chain instead, you could work up a total of 126 and then work your first double crochet in the third chain from the hook and all the way across for a total of 124 double crochet stitches. For this portion of the tutorial, I am just working up a small swatch so I can show you how to make the rows of the blanket. So I'm just gonna add in a few more stitches here and then meet you back at the end of the row, but yours should be a lot longer than mine and you need a total of 124. And if you wanted to adjust the size of your blanket, just add or take away stitches and multiples of two. So as long as you have an even number, you'll be able to adjust the width of this blanket um, to the size that you want. So I have a total of 12 stitches here and this is the end of row one. You should have a total of 124. You're going to go ahead and turn your work and then chain one. And the chain one here does not count as a stitch. And then yarn over, insert your hook into that very first stitch of the row, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you have three loops on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through all three, and we just worked one half double crochet stitch into that first stitch. Now we're going to skip over the following stitch, and in the next stitch, work another half double crochet. And now we're going to be working a half double crochet around the post of the half double crochet that we just made. So yarn over and in this little space here in between the two stitches, that's where you're going to be putting your hook. So you're not putting it into the actual stitch that we skipped, we're just putting it into the um, little gap right here and working it around the post of the previous stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook in that little space and so the stitch is resting on top of your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and you just made one half double crochet around the post of your previous stitch. Again, you're going to skip over the next stitch and in the following work one half double crochet and then work a half double crochet around that post that you just made, putting your hook in that space so that the stitch rests on top of it, and then just work your half double crochet stitch just as you normally would, but around the post instead of into an actual stitch. And so this is what we're going to just be doing all the way across the row, is repeating, um, skipping the stitch, work one half double crochet in the next, and then one half double crochet around the post. So repeat this all the way across, and then I will show you here how to finish off the end of the row and continue on to row three. And your stitch count will also stay the same here. Your stitch count is going to be the same throughout this blanket as well. So you can see here, I am coming up to the very last stitch of the row. We just worked our last half double crochet around the post. Don't forget that very last one around the post. And then when you have one stitch remaining, you're just going to work one half double crochet into the top of that stitch to finish off the row. And then your stitch count will still be 124 stitches. Um, and I still have 12 stitches here, just like I had for row one in my swatch. So once you complete that, you're just going to turn your work and chain two. Chain two does not count as a stitch, so we'll be working our first double crochet in the very first stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is under both the front and the back loop. And now for the remaining stitches of this row, we're going to be working into the back loop only. The back loop only is the loop that is furthest away from you. So the one that is closest to you is the front loop, and then the one that is along the back here, which is furthest away, is the back loop. 
So for these next double crochets, we're just going to be inserting our hook into that back loop, the one that's furthest away from us. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is just a regular double crochet, just worked into the back loop only instead of under both the front and the back. So just continue with this all the way across the row and then I will meet you at the end to show you how to do the last stitch of the row. So once you get to the end of the row, you have one stitch remaining here. We're going to be working our last double crochet under both the front and the back loops this time, just like we did for the first stitch of the row. So this just helps not to tug the yarn weird um, and it makes for a nicer and more even edge. So the first double crochet was under both loops all the way across is back loop only. And then the last stitch of the row is under both loops as well. So your stitch count will stay the same and you can go ahead and turn your work in chain two. And now we're going to be doing something similar to row two right here where we did the half double crochets and then we skipped and we worked around the post, except this time we are doing it with double crochet stitches. So in that very first stitch, you're going to work a double crochet under both those front and back loops and then skip the next stitch. And in the following work another double crochet into it. And now we're going to be working our next double crochet around the post of the double crochet that we just made. So yarn over and again in that little space, you're going to insert your hook and so that the post lays on top of your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, you're going to skip over the next stitch, work a double crochet into the following. And then we're going to be working our next one around the post of the one that we just made. This is exactly like row two with the half double crochets, except you're just replacing the half double with the double crochets instead. So exact same thing. It just makes the holes slightly bit bigger and the stitches a little bit taller. And we're just going to be alternating between half double and double every other row that we do this stitch. So work your way all the way across. And then when you get to the end here, you wanna make sure that you finish with a double crochet in the second one from the end. Don't forget to do that last double crochet around the post of it. And then when you have one stitch remaining, just work a regular double crochet into that very final stitch to finish off the row. And then again, your stitch count is the same as all the other rows and that completes row four. So now we're going to do row five. You can go ahead and turn your work. And for this one, we're going to just be repeating row three. So we're just working double crochet stitches and we're going to be working them into the back loop only except for the first and the last stitch of the row. So we're just going to be working a regular double crochet into this first stitch, working through both the front and the back loop and then work double crochet stitches all the way across into the back loop only and then finish with a double crochet into that final stitch. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of row five here and I'm just going to finish off with one final double crochet into the very last stitch of the row working under both the front and the back loop. So these are the row repeats that we're going to be doing throughout the pattern. So we're going to be repeating rows two through five through the rest of the pattern. So the next row you'll work a half double crochet when working the half double crochets around the post and then the following you'll work a double crochet row and then the following you'll work the double crochet post row and then in the last you'll work a double crochet row. So you're just going to be repeating rows two, three, four, and five over and over and over again until you have the correct amount of rows for the blanket. So if you do the same size as me, you should have a total of 77 rows when you finish. So starting on row six here, I'm going to do a row two repeat and then continue on. So rows six through 77, I'm just repeating rows two through five over and over again. If you wanna make it longer, you can totally add as many rows as you want um, or you can take away as many rows as well. So we're just going to be continuing to repeat and then ending on a row five repeat, which is just the double crochet row. And then we will add the border on after that. So if you need to rewatch the rows to remember how to do that, you can. Um, and then just continue to repeat the rows until you have a total of 77 and I will meet you back here to add the border.
Okay, so now we have the main body of the blanket is complete. I have a total of 77 rows and I've just repeated rows two through five over and over again and we're just ending on a double crochet row here and now we're just going to add on the border of the blanket. So for the border, I decided just to use my uh, worsted weight yarn only and to drop the mandala yarn. I wanted it to have more of a framed look, but you could totally continue to carry on both yarns if you wanted to. You should have enough leftover of the mandala if you're following the pattern exactly, but I'm going to just drop that one instead. So I'm no longer carrying it with me and I'm just going to be using the worsted weight yarn. So we're going to work our stitches down the side of the blanket. After you finish that last row, do not turn your work, just instead chain two, work a double crochet into that same spot, and then we're going to work double crochet stitches down the side. So you can see I'm just putting my hook around the actual post of the stitch. It gives it a little bit more of a clean look. And then when you come up to a spot like this one here, you can see where my double crochet in that row is worked into the stitch from the row below. I'll just put my hook in there as well. And then around the post in the next row. And basically you're just putting your hook wherever it looks best to you. There's no right or wrong way to do it here. I just like to work mine around the posts of the sides um, of the rows of the stitches from that main body. So the exact stitch count here also does not matter. You just wanna make sure that your stitches are evenly placed as you go, um, and then you will want to have an even number of stitches as well. So just keep that in mind as you work along. And then if your blanket has too many stitches together, it will start to look wavy. So kind of try to space them out a little bit better. And then if you don't have enough stitches, it'll kind of pucker and tug your rows and look kind of funky. So you'll wanna make sure that you just evenly place. You can see that mine are just evenly spaced along and you're just going to do this all the way down the side of your blanket, working into the ends of the rows. And then when you get to the corner here, we're going to be working three stitches into the same spot. Um, to help kind of turn our work as we go around the corner. So you can see the very corner stitch here. I'm going to work a double crochet and then I'm going to work two more double crochet into the same spot. So just in each corner of the blanket, you want three double crochet stitches in the same spot to kind of help rotate your work and rotate that yarn around the corner so that it doesn't tug or pull. So I have a total of three here. And then now I'm just going to work one double crochet stitch into the bottom of each stitch all the way across. When I get to the next corner at the other end, I'm going to work three double crochet into the same stitch, work my way back up the other side of the blanket. And then when I get to that last corner, work three more double crochet, work all the way across the top of the blanket. And then when we get to the final, um, stitch of the row, we will be adding two double crochet into the very um, first stitch that we did here a row of the start of the row. So you can see here I'm adding two more because we already have one from when we first started the row or the round, excuse me, and then we're going to add two more here and then just slip stitch to join in that very first double crochet that you made. Okay, so now we are going to turn our work and work our way back around um, the border of the blanket. This time we're going to be working double crochet stitches, front post and back post. So again, your stitch count for round one is not crucial. There's not an exact amount that you need. Just have an even number when you finish and then chain two. This does not count as a stitch. And then we are going to work our first double crochet in the same stitch as the join. And then we're going to be alternating between front post and back post all the way around for each stitch that we just made in round one. Okay, back post double crochet, you're going to yarn over, put your hook to the right side of that stitch and then through the space to the left of it and then work a double crochet as normal. And then you're going to do a front post. So put the stitch on top of the hook and work a double crochet as normal. And then you're just going to alternate this across. So again, 
put your hook from the back to the front of your work, having that stitch, the post of the stitch um, behind your hook and work a double crochet and then do a front post double crochet in the next one. So you're just alternating back post double crochet, front post double crochet all the way around. Um, when you get to the corner, you're just going to continue around. We're not going to be increasing anymore. So basically just back post double crochet, front post double crochet all the way around until you get back to the beginning. When you reach the beginning here, you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the very first stitch that you made to join to finish off. And then you can just fasten off your work and then any ends that you have remaining, you can weave in. I just recommend weaving them back and forth several times. Um, tie a knot if you need to in the mandala strings where you joined your yarn and before weaving them in. And that is it for this pattern. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video tutorial.